All right. So first off, um, I'm going to put it this way. Explain it to me like I'm five or in elementary school. What is a geomagnetic storm? Geomagnetic storm is caused by the, what we say, uh, it's a, a large storm that occurs on the surface of the sun. And so what happened is called a corona mass ejection or CME. And that's where we have the section on the sun that is actually uh, causing what we call a discharge. And we have a magnetic field, a positive and a negative field interacting just below the surface of the sun. It's called a discharge. Okay? And so that's what creates what we call the sunspots. Now, we are expecting these kind of storms on the sun now because the sun is what's called a variable star. Expand and contract, expand and contract every 11 years. Right now, they're expanding. And believe it or not, we haven't reached a peak yet. And so we're still on the upward trend on the curve. And it's supposed to peak around 2025. But now, as John would say, we might have a double peak out of this particular cycle. So this is what we call normal activity that we see. We see these storms constantly every week during the expansion. But this particular storm was unique. It was a very large storm. And then from that, uh, we see the storm, we have what's called a direct hit. Depends on where the location of the storm and where the Earth is located. Okay, And so... This particular storm erupted on uh, May 9th and 10th, and we see a huge sunspot, one of the largest that we have seen maybe in, in 20 years. Um, and some called it the Carrington effect, which in 1859 was the largest ever recorded. And so this was the rival of that particular storm. So from that, we have a, a a charged particle field, which is the coronal mass ejection, and it's headed towards the Earth. Now, it takes about three to four days for that plasma field to hit Earth, and sure enough, it did. It had a direct hit. And what we're seeing, it's kind of like a hurricane. You have a level five. You have a direct hit on the city. You make a huge impact. It's the same thing. We reach a level nine uh, last night was at the highest level, and everybody throughout the United States, from Canadian border to the Mexico border, was able to see it, which is rare. And so for us, it's not only our location at 45 degrees north, it's having good clear weather. Okay? And we got clear weather, beautiful weather for this. So that's what happened last night. We saw the, the plasma field interact with the Earth's magnetic field. It funneled down the North Pole region, and that's where we have the discharge there, and that's what creates the color. When that discharge interacts with the molecules of the oxygen and nitrogen molecules, that's where we get the, gray, uh, the red and the green. We saw a lot of that last night, and so it was a great show. And so it can go on for a few minutes or several hours. And last night, it went on all night long. It's a huge storm. And uh, people were out coming left and right, up and down, trying to go out and watch the storm last night. It will will that show, will that display of the Aurora Borealis, will that continue tonight or even tomorrow? Yeah, well, at the current forecast, I just checked before I, I logged in, um, the NOAA is expecting that the storm will continue tonight. Um, but we don't know if it's going to be a level 7 or 8 or 9. 9 at the top. But even if it's 7 or 8, it's still going to be a good, strong storm. But it might be a little bit fainter than last night. I think it's one of those that last night is going to be a rare one that we had really good, strong storm. Um, so tonight, um, if anybody wants to go out and observe, check the Nowhere website and check the KP level before you head out. And if it's still at a 7 or an 8, uh, their prediction is usually about 3 to 4 hours out. Okay. 
So you want to check it before you head out. And if it's still strong, find a place away from the city, uh, safe place to park, and uh, it's dark, and you look towards the north. You have to have a good view towards the north. And last night, it was visible all the way from the horizon up to the zenith, which was extraordinary. And in all my careers, I've, I've ever seen the northern lights, what have you, from Portland. This was by far the best. Um, and this is a rare one. So I'm hopeful that we'll be able to see it tonight, but there's no guarantee. It's hard to predict them, just like a hurricane, don't know where, where it's going to go. So should people want to chase the storm, so to speak, um, where where would you personally go to see it? Well, I get away from the city. And just to let you know, I try not name locations um, because the late last night, they were totally overwhelmed. Um, there were traffic jam. Uh, there were accidents. Um, I saw some of those last night, sadly. And so I try not to name it. I promised uh, I would not name location. Just the key thing, just getting away from the light, city light, north, south, east, west. And you got a good view of the horizon, but it's especially important to be safe and park safely. Um, unfortunately, some of that, some accident didn't happen last night because uh, people try to park in a place they shouldn't be. Um, so it is an exciting event. I, I don't blame anybody who wants to go out and, and look at it. I really don't. But I also think it's important to note, too, that uh, this is a rare event that hadn't happened in 20 years or so. Will it happen again? It could. It could. This may not be the only storm that we're going to see. And we may happen again this year or next year. It could go on for another two years. And so two things have to happen. One, you have to have a storm pointing right at, at the earth and having clear weather here in Oregon. I see. Um, so a little bit of, or actually, I'm going to ask this question first. I know that certain people were, they had trouble just seeing it with the naked eye, but when they looked through their phone, they were able to see it pretty clear. Do you know why that is? Well, our eyes are not sensitive enough to pick up on the faint colors. You're going to be looking at the auroras with your human eye, and it, it, it looks like kind of a, a haze, but it's not color. But you see the shade. You, you see something, but it can't make it out. Okay, And so that's unfortunate because our eyes can only see up down to the, what's called the sixth magnitude, but we can't see the color. For example, if you try to look at the Orion Nebula, we can only see it in the shade of gray. But when you use the camera as a long exposure, the camera is, has the capability to see much better. You can see the colors and pick out the color on a long exposure. So I strongly encourage if you have a smartphone, which are extraordinarily useful right now, if you can put it on a long exposure and get down to about 1600 um, ISO and adjust your just about stutter speed and all you have to do is just take a three or four second shot, you got yourself a picture. You can see the color. You can see how bright it is. Uh, that's what's fun about that. There were occasional times last night that the color was so strong that you could see it with the human eye. Uh, you can actually see the red and the green. But for the most part, it's just very subtle. People think, oh, though I'm looking at a uh, city light or fog or cloud. But in fact, you were looking at the northern light. You could see it waving. It's moving like this. It was extraordinary. Did you see it last night yourself? No, I didn't. Um, I had to work at seven this morning, so oh. <laughs> I, was, I was asleep. But I wish I could have because from what you're telling me, it sounds like well, probably the greatest you've seen in your career thus far. and It is, it is. And it won't be the last either. Mm -hmm. um, I, Based on what we're seeing at the activity on the sun, I wouldn't be surprised we'll get another one, but we can't, there's no way to predict when it's going to happen, 
But I'm glad that we have these observatory watching the sun because these uh, solar, uh, solar flare can impact our communication satellites um, and the GPS momentarily. But this storm last night didn't do a lot of damage. But uh, if it was a stronger storm, like 1859 was recorded, it knocked out quite a few power grid. But keep, that was the technology then. Now it's different. Now but, do you think uh, we'd have the strength to withstand that sort of impact? Yeah. yeah. And people have been asking, are the crew on the International Space Station okay? They are. Uh, they're protected. And if they have to, they move to a different part of the station where it's designed to shield from these radiation effects from uh, the storm. But they're fine. I'm sure they had a great show up there they can look out of the cupola and look down at the earth they can see a whole field of auroras it would have been a great show i would have been watching all night long <laughs> you know actually you mentioned solar flares and uh this is kind of an anecdotal aside but i knew somebody who was like almost pathologically afraid of solar flares and what it would do to the power grid as we know it like what is the likelihood of a solar flare happening given this geomagnetic activity? And then also, uh, what could it possibly do to the power grid? It, the odds are small, but it's there. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so uh, we designed these satellites. We designed the power grid with the hope they can withstand a strong storm. Sure, uh, we talk about other countries, third world countries. Uh, mm -hmm other places where they don't have the infrastructure like here. Uh, and some places they are not designed to withstand the power surge, okay? So that depends on where you're talking about here on earth. That could be affected by the power surge. Sure, it can happen, absolutely. Um, there's a variety of storms that come from the sun. There's x-ray storms, chronomatic suggestion storms, there's all sorts of storms that come from the sun. That's normal, but hopefully we design our power grid, the infrastructure that's designed to withstand those. So is there a concern? Absolutely, and we have those in place. That's why we have the observatories orbiting around the sun and the earth. They act like buoys, and the buoys is a, is, is a, a, a sensor that will warn us of a, a huge storm. It's very much like the buoys out of the Oregon coast on the Pacific Ocean. They're monitoring the way. And if we get a tsunami, it, it sets up a trigger alert. Same thing with these uh, solar observatories. They're in between us and the sun. In fact, there's several of them. They're halfway between the sun and the earth. And they act like buoys. And if they monitor a major storm, they can alert uh, Earth that there's a major massive storm heading our way. That is, that's fascinating. Yeah. <laughs> like using the buoy analogy in particular makes it very relatable. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it yeah, we're like learning about these storms. Like this one here, I'm sure they're studying every bit of it, the data and the effect. And because this was a big one. So far, we haven't seen any great damage, but we still, we're still in it. And it will be interesting to see what they have learned from this. Absolutely. Now, is, uh, well, those are all my questions. Is there anything else you would like to add? Uh, no. Uh, people have been asking, is Omdi and the Rose City Astronomer joining viewing parties after it? No. Um, we, we, just be, we would just get overwhelmed. Um, so the answer is no to that. But people just need to remember to be safe and and uh, and, and smart where to go to look. Uh, take your camera. Uh, it's the picture of a lifetime. But also that um, this is not going to be the only storm. There'll be more. There'll be more. But I think this one's going to be a hard one to top for a very long time. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jim. I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording. Okay.